G'day friends Gators. So over the weekend, I was putting together a CTFD server because I want to run a CTF workshop coming up for a conference. And I found a lot of guides and I spent a lot of time troubleshooting and I thought a video walkthrough would be really good for the stuff that I use that can hopefully help you if you want to do the same thing for say your school or your workplace. So this will be a bit of a video series that I'll run through different aspects of how this all came together. And hopefully it's useful for you guys. But if you like the content, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow the link down below to support me if you can. But let's get into it. So first things first, we're going to have to decide where we want to host it. For me, that was on AWS. So let's head across to AWS. I think it's just login. Yeah, we want the management console. So let's sign in. I'm just going to show you guys everything in this video series so that it's all clear because there might be little things that I don't explain and I don't want you to miss out if I don't explain it, but I still do it on the screen. Ah, it would have been because I created this under a different account. All right, we're in. So AWS can be quite daunting when you first use it. I honestly don't understand probably 90% of what is in here. Though what we are going to use is EC2, which is EC2 is the endpoints that you use to run that are hosted with AWS. If you've heard S3 before, then that's just static storage. So think the difference between a VM running on your machine and then just a folder. That's the difference between EC2 and S3. So I'll show you here, I've already got a CTF server running. Um, that's up on my website. What we're gonna do is I'll create another one. I'll use my one of my subdomains to see if I can get that pointing to this server in a later video as well. I just wanted to start from scratch, but I didn't want to get rid of the server that I already have because I'm, I'm going to use that for an upcoming workshop. So what we're going to click on here, so if you haven't found EC2 yet, because that was in my, my thing, if you click on services, EC2 is actually just there, but that's because it's recently visited. But if you just type EC2, so we can go here, this just takes us to the EC2 page. If you don't have any instances, then this will just say zero and there's none running. Um, I'm actually going to pause this instance. Uh, yeah, let's stop instance. I don't need it at the moment. Stopping, it'll say stopped in a sec. So we're going to create a new instance. Let's launch instance. Let's give it a, let's give it a name. So let's go um, CTF. YouTube demo. Come down here. Uh, you can select Amazon Linux. I've never used Amazon Linux before. I think it's been a while since I used AWS other than this weekend. Um, I'm used to using Ubuntu. There's a few free tier ones. Uh, we're going to install it on the Ubuntu server 20, which is free tier eligible. 64 bits, fine. Uh, we're going to leave it as the instance type. The, we want to, so you can either either create your own key pair because you won't have one, or um, I'm going to use the key. Oh, let's let's create a new key pair and then we can just use that. So um, let's call this the same as the instance. So I think it was like CTF YouTube demo. My key pair links to the other server, but we could use the same key pair to access this one because we're going to do it all through command line and, and SSH. Uh, the pem file is fine. We can leave that and we just want to create key pair. That'll download the key pair. We're going to have to move this later on into uh, Windows, the Linux um, that runs on Windows so that we can change the permission types. It's a little bit finicky to do in, in Windows. You can still do it. I just like using command line because it's easier. 
uh, security group. So um, we're going to go allow SSH traffic from my IP. This just locks it down a little bit more. So let's say I lose my key or someone hacks into my machine and, and loses my and takes my key. They won't be able to SSH into these boxes unless they're doing it from my house. Um, so we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, we're going to allow this for now, and then we'll tweak the network settings in the in the EC2 instance itself. Plus, we're setting up a web server for a CTF, so we want to allow traffic into it. Uh, storage, so we get up to 30 gigs, so I just created this for 30 gigs. And I think that was it. Yep, storage, advanced details, I didn't really go into this. Just left it as that. Um, to cover off here, so a security group is the equivalent of a firewall in online hosting. So for AWS, a security group is essentially your firewall. You can, we'll go into that once the instance is running and I'll show you like what security group looks like and you can add rules and everything, but it's essentially a firewall. So what we're going to do here is go launch instance. This won't take too long. So successfully launched. This is the instance ID. So if we go back to EC2 here, it should eventually come up. Oh, it's because I'm filtered. Okay, so I had a filter there that just said running. That's why it wasn't coming up. But we see we, we have two now. So we have the original CTF server that I had that I've got for the workshop. And then this is the demo that we just created. All right, so now if you click on the instance ID, uh, we've got a few things here. So um, Amazon AWS has a public DNS. So we can, if we had a web server up and running, so I think by default, because it's a server, it may have NGX running, but we should be able to navigate to this, this public URL. Okay, refuse to connect because we don't actually have the web server running yet, but and we'll use that as part of our networking. But the things you need to know here, so I said I'd show you the security. This is the security group. So if we click on this and open a new tab, uh, we've got inbound and outbound rules. So when we were launching the instance, these were the inbound rules that we set. So this is my IP and the SSH port that we have. We have it open to the internet on port ADN 443. Uh, we don't have any, oh, our outbound rules is just allow all IPv4 traffic. What you can do here is you can actually um, edit the inbound rules. So we can change these. We could add another rule. So say, uh, let's say we wanted like SSH and we were working with someone else and they checked to their IP um, and it was like 139.43.56. 79 uh, slash 32. The 32 is just taking up the full uh, mask. So it's saying take this IP as it is. You can't just have a singular IP, I don't think. Um, you can also give site annotations. So if you wanted to give it subnets, you can do like slash 24 slash 16, um, whatever you need. But we're going to delete that. We, we don't want to make that. I don't know who's at that IP. But that's security group. So as you can see, it's pretty much just a firewall. Um, we'll close that and we'll close this one. All right, so our, our instance is up and running in AWS, but how do we get there? So what we can do is we can go connect and then we're interested in, so our username's Ubuntu, we can change it here. I'm just gonna leave it as Ubuntu and we'll create a separate user for CTFD once we get to that. The SSH client, so it tells us that we need to change the permissions of the uh, PEM file that we downloaded. And then to connect to the instance, um, we connect to the public DNS uh, name that we tried to use before. And it gives us an example command here. So pretty straightforward. If you've never done this before, that's okay. Uh, let's jump into command. So I was already in. Um, if you've never installed WSL before, uh, there's plenty of tutorial videos out there. It's something that I think is well covered and easy to install. So I'm not going to cover it on this channel on how to do it. Um, what I've got installed is Ubuntu, I'm fairly sure. And then how you get to it is just bash. So if you type bash and it's and it says uh, it's not configured or not available, it means that you don't have WSL installed. You need to go in and install it. Um, 
it's essentially virtualizing a Linux operating system within Windows that you can use. Um, I'm fairly certain you can have GUI. I've always just used it for command line for things like grep and strings and SSH and all the stuff like that. So where my pen file was stored was in my downloads folder. And where, where I want to put it is in, within the Linux space within Windows. So an easy way to get there is just tilde. This puts me in the home directory for the Desi user uh, within Linux. So if I go like this, it's a normal Linux system running on Windows. And go print working directory, home Desi. Uh, this is my other PEM file that I've got. So what I want to do is I want to pull the PEM file from my downloads folder across into here. So I'm going to go move. Uh, the Windows file system sits in the mount drive according to Linux. So I'm going to go users, Alex, downloads, and then we called it CTF YouTube PEM. Yep. And then a dot because the dot moves it to this directory that we're currently in. So if we weren't in this directory. We would then have to specify where we wanted to put it. I'm just going to put it in here because it's easy to change to whenever I jump into bash. And then if I go ls tech al, we can see the permissions, how they're set. So uh, this is mine and it, the root user has read access. And then Windows, because it's downloaded it, has all access. It's fairly open. And if we look at the instructions here, it's telling us that we need to change the permissions. And this 400 equates to the read access, as we'll see. So if we go uh, chmod 400 ctf uh, YouTube, and if I do lstackal again, we can see that it's changed to the read again. This just locks it down. If we if we tried to change it, so I think let's let's demo this. I want to show you what happens if you don't do this. Again, this is like basic SSH stuff. Um, showing it for the benefit of those that, that have never seen this before. So if I, I changed it to seven sevens again, this changes it back to what it was. Um, if we then try an SSH, so I've copied it from here. If you right click in the terminal, that pace, I hit enter, I go, yes. It says the private key will be ignored. It has bad permissions. So um, it doesn't like that the permissions are so pervasive. So if we go back and change to the read only again for the root user, I have this weird thing when I go up, you can see it's added that chmod, it's actually not including that in the command. It's just weird. You can cancel out that. We'll copy again and just paste. This time it let me in because I changed the permissions, which like follow the instructions. It'll, it'll get you there. All right, so now we've got the server. The next thing that I wanted to do was, I, I suppose what we'll do is I'm going to break the video here. I'm going to break it up because if you wanted to just learn how to get an AWS instance up and running and you've done CTFD before, great, cool. You've done that part, go and do you and you can go from here. Plus in the next video, when I start installing a CTFD, I started with the Docker instance and had no end of troubles. And I think now looking back on it is I had problems with my networking ability, not with the CTFD Docker instance. So I'm going to make a video on how I did it. And then I'm going to go back and make another video on the Docker one again to show you how um, there's two different ways you can install uh, CTFD. But thanks for watching. If you've liked the content, please like and subscribe. Follow the link to support if you can. And I'll see you in the next video.